VP of Technology. Can, is it Solana? Yeah, great. Uh, I'm the VP of Technology at uh, Solana Foundation, and I am here to talk about uh, Solana's Tech Year in Review. Talked a lot about MEV and the, kind of the different parts of the stack. So this is kind of the perspective of you know Solana uh, Foundation. We are the we have, we have the control of the treasury, so we're kind of like the uh, facilitators of the ecosystem uh, around Solana. And I know this has been very technical up to this point, so I've tried to arrange this semi-narrative based, kind of like the State of the Union, and then I'll kind of go through the history of, you know, Genesis now through like our rough roadmap uh, for the future. All right, so you've seen a lot of these similar graphs uh, today. Uh, I won't get too in the weeds a lot of them. I think the one on the, the, the top left is most informative and relative to what we've talked a lot about today. It's, it's the revenue and the, the MV capture of the validators on Solana. Uh, but that's kind of the gap because of a lot of other things. There's, there's a lot of stable coin volumes, uh, DEX volumes. It's, it's very diverse. It's like so across all major metrics that we really care about, uh, they are you know, actively increasing and um, yeah. And so like maybe, maybe uh, a little bit of a comparison, it's even starting to become a higher percentage wise than, or you know, greater than Ethereum volumes. We don't like to compare ourselves directly to Ethereum all the time, but it is kind of an important note to work where we are relative to the industry is today. Uh, Solana is growing and uh, yeah, surpassing, uh, you know, Ethereum and the very, very uh, important metrics, you know, what drives the chain economy, what, uh, you know, what makes people money and, you know, how the bread is made. Uh, the thing that actually, from a platform perspective, that we care about isn't, you know, these are kind of downstream effects. They talked about different parts of the stack. Uh, the part that we have control over, though, is setting up businesses for success. And so this one is a similarly, you know, up and to the right kind of graph. But if you see, there's actually a little line above the, you know, the, the, the x-axis there that is the median fees. So this is a, just fees on Solana. The average fees are going up, and that is a lot of the MEV that we talked about today. So if I am a you know, app developer and, uh, and maybe a DEX or something, and there's a, a loan default, and everybody wants to attack that loan default, there's, people are willing to pay up to that profitability for that transaction. So that's where the MEV capture is, and there's a lot of that on Solana today because there's so many different, you know, different types of tokens and so, different, so much different types of activity but the really interesting for, thing for us is the median. So if I just want to do a normal token transfer, there's not really contention there. There's no reason for me to battle against 10 other people to just do my simple to token transfer. That fee is staying roughly the same the entire time. And so what this makes it uh, available to app developers is, is having a diverse set of uh, types of economic activity. So maybe said another way, in a negative case, if every type of fee was also going to up and, up and to the right, certain types of businesses that were profitable for, maybe low margin or whatever there would be, would be priced out. And you see this with, that's part of the reason why blockchains up to this point have been pretty boom or bust. Something highly speculative, luxury, whatever type of good will come in and price out a bunch of other applications. And if that happens long enough, they'll just go out of business or lose their, uh, you know, whatever, whatever customer base they had because that would be priced out. And then when the speculative luxury market leaves, so like NFTs on Ethereum, for example, it starts going down, there's nothing really left. Everything else was priced out. But that's not really the case on, on Solana. You, you have the opportunity for a diverse uh, ecosystem of different types of applications. In fact, it was, like, it was basically this graph even uh, even a year ago, that, that encouraged Visa to, de to deploy a lot of their merchant-to-merchant -merchant settlement on Solana. Because they said, oh, we can have a long-term future where we do Forex trading and a bunch of other international businesses, but we can also just run our normal payments business with really low friction. And so as a, as a protocol, this is what we really care about. We are, we are, our customers are these developers and people who want to operate businesses that are successful and they gain the users and uh, yeah, so this is really setting up the ecosystem and an economy for success. Uh, so how did we get there to where we have this capability of, uh, this unique capability of having a diverse economy? Uh, well, it all started, there's this fabled story with totally two, uh, two coffees and a beer, or maybe it was two beers and a coffee, I actually forget. But it, it, he, you know, this had this epiphany and wrote a white paper and he wrote a blog. 
Okay, so out of that, actually, the fundamental from the, just the core that, uh, things that are blockchain uh, were rethought. How do you make every single part of it efficient? And the, the core vision has always been very clear. Decentralized NASDAQ, blockchain at NASDAQ speed, whatever way you, way you want to boil it down into a narrative, it is connecting the world's state as fast as physics and speed of light will allow. Uh, and I can get, I'll get into a little bit about what that enables from a product perspective, but like that was the, the core of the, what uh, the, the vision uh, started out and always has been. Uh, there have been ch notable challenges along the way. Like, we'll be the first to tell you that uh, we're tackling a very hard and very enormous problem. You know, th th it is everything that NASDAQ is, everything that Forex is, also with payments. It's, it's, it's connecting all of the world's, uh, you know, rebuilding a, a type of internet uh, layer. And so it is, it is challenging to do this. We have a lot of uh, different parts of the stack to, to come fundamentally rebuild. And uh, you've, you know, in, our, in our early history, uh, parts of these are good problems. They were caused by demand on the network. I would say that if you have no graph like this and you're sitting at one transaction per second, that's a worse problem than this. Uh, but we definitely had uh, our own challenges to, to um, you know, get these full green. Uh, and that has basically been solved through just iterative development. We uh, don't have these long, lengthy, like, you know, pie in the sky type of roadmaps that require some, you know, pseudo math or whatever. It is, it is iterative. This, we, we, we are very product focused. We want to meet our developers and solve their problems. So this is the first 10. This is, this, is about, this is a look backwards. This is our reverse roadmap that shows you what we have done to, to uh, satisfy our developers, uh, and I guess we're like on 2.1, so we've had about uh, 21 minor releases uh, since uh, inception. And I, I'm not going to go through all the individual ones, but just, just know that this is a very practical engineering problems that we're solving uh, because we've always had, always had such a clear vision on where we are going. Uh, also, I think it's pretty important to note that it's not just like totally typing on Twitter and then chat GPT, like translating it into code. There's actually a, a lot of orgs. Like, like I'm the, I'm, I work at the Solana Foundation level and that's not even actually on this list. I facilitate all these orgs and kind of like resource them, help with their architecture diagrams and stuff like that. But there's about uh, 10 uh, contributing orgs and four clients. So like in the middle there is the clients, uh, you can even call Jito as maybe like a augmentation client, so it's like kind of a 4.1 kind of clients. But the, there's four uh, clients in the in development. The one that runs uh, most of the or, the network that you see today is called Anza, uh, the Agave client. Uh, but there's also Fire Dancer, which uh, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about later, and uh, I, a few other clients that have different kind of types of capabilities, uh, and then. Just contributors to the network. There's there's researchers. There's uh, network engineers. Like all different parts of the stack that are uh, contributing, and along with, and that's even on top of just the core auditor set. And um, this is what decentralization looks like. These are completely different orgs contributing to open source code bases. They even collaborate on an, uh, a Discord that is completely open. We, you could log in right now and see all their really. So if you think these, texts are, these talks are very technical, you want to get like really down the rabbit hole, yeah, just look at the, it's a, just the Solana Tech Discord, and you will see a lot of the, the uh, coordination across all these different orgs. Um, and then the actual code is on open source GitHub repos. Um, yeah, but the thing that ties all of these orgs together is a, like, this is, a, a, it's kind of a joke, but like uh, Tol Anatoly produced a uh, website that is the solanaroadmap.com. You can go to it right now. And it just says this. Increase, <laughs> increase bandwidth, reduce latency. It's kind of our uh, rallying call across all these different orgs. So you don't need as much of a, like a distinct roadmap of you do this, you do this across the 14 different orgs. You just have this very clear uh, guidepost. And so this isn't, uh, there's this, if you see a Kevin Bowers talk, I'll talk about Amdo's Law. And that's basically just any part of the stack can be a bottleneck at any given time. Uh, and you should just be, instead of only trying to do uh, the lowest hanging fruit, you should do all at all times 
and that's what actually has you accelerate faster as an ecosystem or as a, as a technology because you may not be the, the bottleneck today, but you will be tomorrow because somebody else is at your toes. So there's basically this competition across, uh, through all those orgs I, I showed you on the previous slide to you know, find you know, whatever part of the stack. Some of them are working on all parts of the stack, but yeah, across all of them, it's very clear. Um, and so what this has made, it's like today, don't get me wrong, I, I would say we were the first to tell you that the, the, the stack is not done, but it, it is definitely in a, in a place where we can accelerate. The, and that's the, all those up and to the right, those kind of these vertical graphs, that is enabled by a lot of this development across all these orgs. Uh, you know, things are green. The uptime on Solana this year is actually uh, greater than Google Cloud and a lot of ma major cloud providers. This is something that we're always trying to uh, you know, improve upon while we also have this rapid uh, phase of development. Uh, I think another thing that's really important to note around uh, enabling an economy is making sure your standards and the actual application layer tooling is there for people to do really well. I, I don't know the exact stat off the top of my head, like to today, but something like over 10,000 tokens will be minted on Solana today, and I, I, day over day. And part of the reason why that's so so easy is because the way that Solana's programming model works. You produce a standard and uh, or a, 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 you know, a smart contract type on Solana, and you can reuse it the exact same way. And so there's in DEXs, you know, Drift is here, there's, there's other, uh, you know, Radium, Orca, there's all these DEXs that, that can now permissionlessly take these tokens. That actually isn't the case on Ethereum and some other programmatic models. You actually have to redo those. You have to get re-audited, um, and they can put little gotchas in there because the spec isn't hard enough for a DEX to permissionlessly take in tokens. You have to whitelist the, like, the front ends tend to have to whitelist the tokens and approve them because they could have some little gotcha in there that would uh, upset the DEX. That isn't the case on Solana. Every, like, once you get this um, hardened code, people aren't copying and pasting and adjusting it. You are submitting your own configuration for whatever asset you want to do. Um, and this is actually goes into like one of the main points of blockchain. It is to have uh, composable resources. Otherwise, you would just have one uh, centralized exchange kind of controlling everything and being more performant. One of the main reasons to, to go decentralized is that you can have all these things work in tandem uh, in a uh, system that controls for adversarial conditions. Uh, so this is like a lot of weird text, but like this kind of goes back into the uh, this diverse economy I was talking about earlier. We have token extensions, we have different platforms that we're working with, web, mobile, uh, and we have different entities that are optimizing for each of these. We're getting like more and more RWA, more, more and more just huge amounts of tokens being launched out to fan communities through uh, uh, products like Drip, which is basically like uh, decentralized email campaigns and other things like that. So there's, it's not just any one thing that is happening right now, it is a ton of things that are happening. It's also very connected. I think, again, the reason to be on a blockchain is the, this composability. I do something, you can kind of permissionlessly build on top of my thing and add value to it uh, in a way that is defined by a protocol and not necessarily hand approved. Uh, and so you can have something like a payment network right next to a NASDAQ, or right next to some Forex exchange, and all these things are kind of interoperating together. And that's what the power of um, yeah, yeah, blockchain can be. And uh, again, you're not even even low margin aspects of that can can exist next to the high value luxury goods of that. Uh, yeah, and you see this like finance will just flow to the lowest friction areas. And so, in the last you know year, three months, a lot of value has flown into Solana, and none of it. And even though a lot of economic activity has risen the average price the businesses aren't being priced out, and so they're staying there. So you're getting these network effects across. And so a lot of inflows are coming into Solana. Uh, I will just briefly touch on the future development. Uh, again, we don't like to, we, we satisfy iteratively our, our, our uh, ecosystem, but Fire Dancer is a completely new client made out of the jump trading team. Uh, they are, it's a, an incredibly fast performant Asynchronous execution, I'll talk about next slide, and then there's just a lot of, you'll, you hear about double zero later on today, but basically the, the thing, we are rebuilding uh, and we're upgrading the internet. It is a different layer that no individual controls that is able to uh, facilitate financial transactions. 
Uh, asynchronous execution, again, I don't wanna bore you too much, but it just, it is a, uh, another piece that will allow for just very efficient d data tracking uh, and, and da data passing across the internet. Uh, the, I think the thing that also to sell here that I really wanted to sell on this slide is that Solana is not done. Like the, the, the spec is about as, is the most efficient thing to satisfy the, the decentralized NASDAQ vision, but there's known iterative pieces along the way. And so right now in testnet, we're already, there's a next iteration is, you know, for 40,000 uh, TPS. And the next one will have, you know, more, more, more. It's just like this, uh, it is a very iterative development. Uh, the last release, this is from, from 2.0 that was just released about two weeks ago. It is uh, latency decreased by 10% and the uh, replay time, so the propagation throughout the network was, was decreased. So that's it. That's basically uh, what we do. We have a clear vision of, across decentralized NASDAQ, fastest speed of life will allow, and we are uh, iteratively, uh, every release, getting more and more towards that vision. And so basically, the inclusion, like the network is happy, a lot of uh, stakers are happy, and, but the job isn't done. And that's, that's, that's where we are today. Thank you.